Good morning and thank you for joining us today. We invite you to worship with us at the Pyburn Street Church of Christ. We will come together this morning at 9 o'clock for a period of Bible study, followed by worship services at 9.50. We will come together again this evening at 6 for worship, and then again on Wednesday evening at 7 for Bible study. You're always welcome at the Pyburn Street Church of Christ. This morning we're going to be looking at the conversion of Lydia, found in Acts chapter 16, verses 5 through 15. This was a very remarkable woman. She had some outstanding traits, which we must understand if we are to properly understand this account. In verses 13 and 14, it is recorded, and on the Sabbath day, we, that is, Paul and Silas and Luke, went forth without the gate by a riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spake unto the women that were come together. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, one that worshipped God, heard us. Paul and Silas were in the city of Philippi. And you may remember that Paul was now on his second missionary journey. And they had preached throughout Asia Minor, and now, by the direction of the Lord, they had been brought over into the region of Macedonia, unto the city of Philippi. They had come there to preach, and when they arrived, they began seeking out those that might be receptive to their message of the gospel. So they went down to the riverside, where there was a place of prayer. And there they come into contact with this woman, Lydia. Philippi was not the home of Lydia. Apparently she was on some type of business trip, as we would say today. Actually, her home was in the city of Thyatira. Thyatira, the home of Lydia, was a chief city in Asia, as revealed in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 11. It was situated on its northern border, and Paul, in passing by Mysia on his way to Troas, he probably had passed near it. It was noted for the excellence of its purple dyes, and it still exists today as a town of about 10,000 inhabitants. Lydia was a businesswoman, and she was on a business trip and had come to Philippi to sell some of her goods. Her hometown, Thyatira, was almost 300 miles away. You will notice that the text says that she was a seller of purple. Purple was not a material of a certain type of cloth, but it was a dye. And this dye was so expensive that only the very best qualities of material were dyed purple. And so instead of wearing the name of the material, the goods wore the name of the dye put into them. Rich kings were often described as being wearers of purple. And in considering the very expensive product which she sold, the probability is that Lydia was at least comfortably fixed financially. She was probably living a fairly easy life. The outstanding trait of her character is that she was a faithful worshiper of God as best she knew how. It is not often that one finds a successful or wealthy business person that is a faithful servant of God. One frequently will find businessmen or businesswomen who will attend the services of some religious group thinking that it might better their business prospects, but not very many of them are truly devoted to the service of the Lord. But here we find this businesswoman, Lydia, in a city almost 300 miles away from her home. And when the Sabbath day came, she put aside her business cares and went down by the riverside to pray. And it was while she was at the side of the river that the Apostle Paul came to her with this message from God. There are several incidents regarding the conversion of this woman which has been used improperly to try to prove some doctrines that are simply not true. But before we notice some examples of this, let us notice one other point. In this present series of studies that we have undertaken on the subject of New Testament conversion, we have looked at what the Bible says about the conversion of Paul, about the Ethiopian eunuch, about Cornelius, and now Lydia. 
And if you will think back over the record of each of these individuals, you will remember that they were worshipers of God according to some manner before their conversion. Or in other words, they were religious people, but they were unsaved people. Yet in most places, there are many, many preachers who will tell you that it does not matter how you worship just so long as you worship God. Yet here we have four Bible examples of where either men or women worshipped God, yet they were not right with God. They were not saved. If Lydia was right in the eyes of God, then why would Paul go and preach to her? There would have been nothing he could have told her if she was already doing what God wanted her to do. To worship God, friends, is simply not enough. It must be worship of God as he commanded. We must worship as he said to do it, or else it will be vain. Now many have misunderstood and misapplied the teaching of Luke concerning the opening of the heart of Lydia by the Lord. The passage says, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, one that worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened to give heed unto the things which were spoken by Paul. The problem is, what does this expression, the Lord opened Lydia's heart, really mean? Does it mean what many of our religious neighbors say? They teach that one is so totally lost that they cannot even so much as listen to the preaching of the gospel until there has been some miracle performed upon their heart in order to open it that they might obey what is being spoken. But friends, this passage not only does not teach this, it denies it. Before any mention is made of the opening of the heart of Lydia by the Lord, she is said to have heard the preaching of the apostle. The opening of the heart of the woman was not to put her in such a condition where she would be able to hear the preaching of the word, for she heard the preaching before her heart was opened. So what does this mean that the Lord opened her heart? Well, the statement that the Lord opened Lydia's heart implies that previously her heart was in some way closed. It was certainly not closed by the hardness of a sinful life or by some type of inherited sin, for she had previously been a worshiper of, uh, a worshiper of God. It was closed in the sense that an honest heart of a Jewish worshiper might be closed. Every Jew and every Jewish proselyte was at that time so grounded in the belief that the coming of Christ would establish an earthly kingdom that it produced a heart very tightly closed against the idea of a crucified Savior, one whose reign as a king is purely one that is spiritual. It continued to be a stumbling block for the Jews for many years, even after the time of Christ and after the first century when the church came into establishment and grew in great prominence. Now, whether Lydia was a Jew or a proselyte, this was the home of Israel in which she had been instructed and for which she had been taught to devoutly pray. And if the natural effect of it had not been removed from her heart, she would have rejected the gospel, as did the mass of those who had been her teachers. The statement then that the Lord opened her heart means that he removed this mistaken conception which would have prevented her from accepting Jesus Christ as the Savior. It simply means that this mistaken view that she had of Christ was taken away so that she might receive him and thereby be saved. The reason for her heart being opened or cleared of mistaken conceptions of Christ was in order that she might give heed unto the things which were spoken by Paul in verse 14. Not only have men been mistaken as to what was meant when the Bible says that the Lord opened her heart, but they have been misled as to how the Lord opened her heart. This instance is often used to show how the Lord must perform some direct operation of the Holy Spirit upon the heart of the sinner in order for the sinner to be able to hear the gospel. But friends, this is not what happened. Truly, the Lord opened the heart of Lydia, but it was done through the word of God. As you remember, Paul had been concentrating his efforts in preaching to Asia Minor and had made no preparation to go over into Macedonia where Lydia was at the time, but the Lord had sent him to Macedonia. 
In Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10, it says, And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden of the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they were come over against Mysia, they essayed to go to Bithynia. And the Spirit of Jesus suffered them not. And passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There was a man of Macedonia standing, beseeching him, and saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, straightway we sought to go forth into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So you see, Paul had not intended to go into Macedonia to preach, and therefore would not have met this outstanding woman. But the Lord Jesus sent him there. It was by the work of the Lord that the preacher was instructed as to where to go to preach, and consequently it was the Lord that opened Lydia's heart through his chosen and sent messenger, the Apostle Paul. Our purpose in studying this case of conversion is to learn all that we can that pertains to one's conversion. Notice this woman did the same things that every person who becomes a Christian today must do. Upon hearing the words that Paul proclaimed, she must have believed them, even though it is not directly stated, for she obeyed what he commanded. Certainly she would not have obeyed these commands that he gave had she not believed what he said. Second, we see that she repented. In studying the subject of repentance, it's seen that to repent simply means to change one's mind. And it's a change of mind which is produced by godly sorrow and followed by a change of life. Lydia must have repented also, for she changed her mind about living life as a Jew, and consequently she changed her action. She quit being a Jewish worshiper and became a Christian. Then thirdly, she obeyed the gospel by being baptized. The scripture says, And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come unto my house and abide there. Acts 6, verse 15. Friends, she did three things. She believed, she repented, and she was baptized. This is exactly the same thing that you and I must do in order to be saved from the sins of our past lives. If you're not willing to do these three things, then you do not have enough faith to be saved by obedience. But there's one last matter that I'd like us to examine for the remainder of our time this morning. And it also relates to the conversion of Lydia. And it's also a point on which many people are confused and many more deceived. Verse 15 says, And when she was baptized and her household. This passage says that Lydia and her household were baptized. Now there are many religious groups who practice baptism of infants, or at least they sprinkle water on babies. When called upon for proof of their action, they will cite this instance and one or two other similar ones in which a household is said to have been baptized, and they deduce from it that there must have been some babies baptized. Friends, it should be apparent from the very outset that the argument from this instance seeking to justify infant baptism is based wholly upon speculation. The Bible says absolutely nothing about infants or children, for that matter, being in this household. In fact, one might have had a household comprised wholly of servants or of helpers, and Lydia might well have had this since she was a businesswoman and likely was quite wealthy. We do not even know that she was a married woman. Furthermore, if she was married, we do not know that she had any children. This must also be supposed in order to justify infant baptism. One must also assume that she had them with her. Remember, Philippi was not Lydia's home. It was a city almost 300 miles away from her home, a city called Thyatira. It's hard to conceive that a businesswoman would carry an infant or even several small children 300 miles away on a business trip. But, on, but not only must one suppose that this woman was married, had children, had them with her, they must also assume that these children were infants. So you see, any argument drawn from this text seeking to prove that there were infants baptized in this household has to be read into the text. It must be speculated. Friends, men are very hard-pressed when they make such an unfounded argument. The Bible plainly teaches that only penitent believers are fit subjects for baptism, and an infant can be neither penitent nor 
a believer. This conversion of Lydia is but another example in which God sent a preacher to preach to an individual. The preacher preached, the sinner believed, and obeyed the commands sent of God by this messenger. And we too can be saved by obeying the gospel. Thank you for joining us for our program today, and may God bless you with a wonderful Lord's Day.